So good morning, and thank you for having me here this morning in London. Um, for those of you who d don't have a, a cycling background, I made my name in professional cycling with a career that spanned 16 years. During that time, I completed 12 Tour de France's, represented Australia at four Olympic Games, and was the first ever cyclist to win three consecutive World Time Trial Championships. And unfortunately for me, due to a, condition, a, a congenital heart condition, I was forced to announce my retirement earlier this year. But it turns out that all things happen for a reason. Just days after making my announcement, I was jointly challenged by my former team manager, Bjarne Rees, and the co-founder of Saxo Bank, Lars Cy Christensen, to take the role as CEO of their new business venture, the Rees Sire Project. You may ask, what does the Resi project do? Our goal is to create a business model where we combine a number of cycling related businesses that will assist, I'll just call it my, that will assist in the generation of revenue to support women's and men's professional cycling teams. And yes, I did just use the words generation of revenue and professional cycling teams in the same sentence. We also believe that through cycling, people have a greater chance of living a healthy and happy lifestyle. So to support the above goal, we have split our various projects and investments into two categories, money consuming and money generating. And once again, for those uh, who do not have a cycling background, top level cycling teams like soccer teams, like football teams, burn through money. I'm not going to delve into those details uh, of team budgets, but if you want, later you can pull me aside and I'll be happy to, to bring you up to speed. So within the money generating activities, we have created an indoor fitness bike called Virtue Pro. It's a real game changer for the gyms, spinning classes, and training sessions, or, or even private training sessions at home. And we're about to ship our first 150 orders, only in Denmark, and the accompanying software to our initial clients. I think it really is a, a cool product. In the next three to four weeks, we'll also be releasing on our website a calendar of cycling events for both men and women. They will mainly be based in Mallorca and Italy regions. And our clients will be given the chance to live and ride like a professional. Did you know that almost one million, one million people travel to Mallorca each year with a bicycle? And we want to reach out just to a small percentage of those people and help them with their training programs, provide them with with sound advice on nutrition and generally pass on the wealth of knowledge that we have within our organisation. I even have this idea of, of having a descending course led by Peter Sagan, the famous descender, but I obviously need to give that a little bit more thought. Could be a little bit dangerous. Um, and finally, we'll also be offering cycling holidays that run in parallel with the world's biggest pro races, such as the Tour de France and the Paris Roubaix. I'd now like to move into the topic that I was asked to cover today and spend just a few minutes on how the fit fitness and wellness industry is changing due to technology. And furthermore, I'd like to convey my thoughts and experiences surrounding the gamification of cycling. And for some time now, I've been personally using the virtual uh, platforms such as Zwift, Be Cool, and Tax. And this has really changed the cycling world. They've done a fantastic job. And if I can just add on a, on a side note, the days of indoor training sessions where time stands still are behind us. Swift, Be Cool and Tax have also helped me open my own horizons and helped me identify the infinite possibilities that exist in the virtual world. 
I've also tried many of the fitness apps, such as Strava, Move, and Garmin Connect. They all address different needs and produce positive results. That being said, from my perspective, there are areas where the current generation of virtual platforms and apps could be even better, where the extensive data being gathered could be used to create even more advanced and intuitive solutions, both for recreational and professional athletes. This is the exact area where we are focusing at Resire for our virtual platform called Pulse Planet. So let's move to the current sensor technology. They allow users to measure and track metrics such as pace, energy consumption, power, heart rate variance, sleep patterns, and much, much more. And if sensor technology continues the progression of the last decade, I can actually envision future generations of wearables measuring and tracking blood lactate levels and metrics that today we can only dream of. That's meaningful data that can be used to draw even more precise conclusions of your physical or mental state. But to really push the envelope, we will also need to interpret the data in new ways. So in my view, technology in the fitness and wellness industry is only at the tip of the iceberg. It's just begun and exciting times are coming. In closing, I believe the key question here is how we will aggregate the data into something that is beneficial to you as a person, as an athlete, and to society as a whole. So in doing so, it seems logical to me to address the questions surrounding data with a great deal of creative thinking, lots of inspiration, smart app developers, and of course, time. Again, the use of fitness and wellness data is a subject that we are extremely interested in at Reese Sire. Once again, thank you for having me this morning.